This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Pepper Giese, Carmine Bailey, Vince Power, and new patron, Adam. Everybody welcome in, Adam. Yay! On this episode of DTNS, is there anything left to talk about besides Sam Altman being fired by OpenAI? Yes, the CEO of Cruise quit. And there's a connection there to OpenAI. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, November 20th, 2023 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. From the Atlanta area, I am Nika Montfort. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. We're just going to put this out right here at the top of the show. By the time you listen to this, everything in OpenAI may have changed <laughs> or nothing may have happened. We don't we don't know, do we, Nika? It's a gamble. Yeah, it's a, it's a, we're going to give you our best analysis on what has actually happened. That that won't change. The past probably probably won't change, uh, and uh, and and give you our best estimate of what's happening based on what we know at the time of recording. But this is definitely a moving situation. Nevertheless, we shall start with the quickets. This just out of the Epic versus Google trial. Google's head of global partnerships, Don Harrison, confirmed that Spotify paid nothing, 0% commission when users chose to buy subscriptions through Spotify's own system, and 4% if they used Google's system, which is much less than the standard 15% that other app store developers pay. Harrison uh, said that Spotify's popularity was enough to justify a bespoke deal. And then Google confirmed that a small number of developers that invest more directly in Android and Google Play have different service fees than other developers. Google did not name who those other developers are. In his Power On newsletter, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman says Apple's Vision Pro headset may not get a January launch after all. Mm. Gurman says the Vision Pro is likely to launch in March now. Gurman also says Apple is still working out some of the little kinks and details with final device testing reportedly underway. Also, the Vision Pro is set for a U.S. launch with the gradual roll out to other countries afterward. Also, Gurman reports that Apple is working on a cellular modem to integrate into its system on a chip with the aim of offering Mac laptops with cellular data capabilities. Ooh, hmm. Spicy. I like that one. I hope that, I hope that one ends up uh, panning <laughs> out. Yeah. Uh, if you uh, heard us talk last week about nothing being able to support iMessage, well, that's not happening anymore. Nothing has pulled nothing chats from the Google Play Store. Uh, the company had announced Thursday that the app, which is powered by Sunbird, would let nothing users receive Apple iMessages on their nothing Android phones. Sunbird works by logging you into a Mac mini in the cloud or something similar, and then forwarding your messages to the app. However, critics noted that this provided a security risk because you're putting your login in someone else's machine. And 9to5Google even did a teardown or noted that there was a teardown indicating that the end-to-end -end encryption was an end-to-end. -end. It didn't cover the entire journey that it that left some messages available in plain text. Nothing stated on X that it was, quote, delaying the launch until further notice to work with Sunbird to fix several bugs. I wonder what happened to call them to pull this. Mm. Um, Tinder is redesigning its profile page to appeal to Gen Z users, isn't everybody? Features include conversation starters, quizzes, tags, and a dark mode. Conversation starter prompts include the key to my heart is, mm. the first item on my bucket list is, and two truths and a lie. TechCrunch notes competing app Hinge uses similar prompts. Wire ran um, an article Saturday that was just this past Saturday saying that Gen Z users um, have been leaving the dating apps and Axios Generation Lab polls found that 79% of college students do not use dating apps regularly to me, which is no surprise. Oh, yeah, hey, that's, that's a <laughs> lucrative market and growing market that they need to recapture. Uh, finally, scientists at Lanzhou University in China published a paper in the journal Science Advances describing a prototype for an implantable wireless energy device. 
the biodegradable device can receive and store energy to power bioelectric systems, things like sensors for monitoring your health or uh, small devices that deliver drugs in particular amounts. The devices improve on existing implantable power sources that are usually single use. These can be used multiple times over a longer period of time. The new device uses a magnesium coil to charge when a power transmitter is placed on the skin above the implant, and then the power is stored in a module made of zinc supercapacitors. The amounts of zinc and magnesium are below the daily intake recommendations for people. So when they get reabsorbed in the body, they're just used as nutrients. Uh, tests in rats worked for up to 10 days, and the device fully dissolved into their bodies within two months. All right, let's uh, let's uh, talk about the other firing. Uh, Sam Altman leaving OpenAI wasn't the only drama at the top of an AI-related company this weekend. Kyle Vogt, uh, V-O-G-T, resigned as CEO of Cruise. Uh, Cruise is the company he co-founded and then sold to GM. He had been working in charge of Cruise under GM. His co-founder, Dan Kahn, has also resigned. Executive Vice President of Engineering at Cruise, Mo El Shinawi, will take over as President and CEO or CTO. Uh, Cruise had, as you know, suffered numerous setbacks recently. We've talked about a lot of these on the show. Last month, the California Department of Motor Vehicles suspended its permit so that it was not allowed to operate autonomous vehicles without safety drivers. Uh, the DMV said Cruise withheld seven seconds of video regarding an October 2nd incident where a pedestrian was struck by a Cruise vehicle. Cruise uh, said that they provided all the video that was requested. There's a little dispute about that. Um, but in addition to losing that permit to operate without safety drivers, uh, Cruz paused all of its driverless testing, whether it was in California or not. Uh, also of note, Kyle Ooh. Vogt co-founded Twitch along with Emmett Shear. And we're going to get to that in a little bit, but Emmett Shear is the new CEO of OpenAI, and he just took that job today. So it could be just coincidence. I don't know. Uh, but but Nika, uh, explain your connection to this story and, and, <laughs> and, and what you think of it. So um, uh, I, right when Cruz was being um, bought by General Motors, and onboarded, I actually um, worked with some of the cruise folks to, um, at that time, I was doing back-end development um, for HR systems. Mm -hmm. So getting uh, those folks, you know, integrated into our system, you know, knowing the tech stack um, as related to getting them onto uh, HR. And at this time, it was, they were still in a garage, you know, getting, you know, they they had just yeah, no, been open, this open partnership. Runner, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it was just joint venture. And at the time, that was really something surprising because usually GM is a huge company. They buy things, they envelop them, and they keep going. But this was more of a joint venture, more of a partnership, and it wasn't a, a, a full buy. So, um, you know, that's my kind of little disclaimer that um, mm -hmm. I do have, you know, some level of inner working knowledge um, from Cruise and the relationship to GM based on my, um, you know, past employment. Um I think this um, is is an interesting concept. Um, the way that this kind of all played out, um, it seems as if it was something that was likely already in the works and possibly kind of moved up. But I think with the issues that have been um, going on with Cruz, it to me it was the obvious next step because there are some significant issues. While significant progress has been made from what the last eight, seven or so years ago, um, when Cruz really came onto the scene, it's still a long way to go and it's still significant issues. And, you know, just looking forward as to where Cruz is expected to go and, you know, GM getting their, um, you know, return on investment. Um, I think, you know, some, some some critical things had to happen, and I think it's starting with the um, exit of of the the founder and CEO, um, as as well as the other co founder as well. Because yeah, yeah. again, as you noted, and and I know that you guys have been talking about it, the the issues, particularly um, in California, are are quite significant. 
Yeah. And uh, in contrast to the other story we're going to talk about here in a second, uh, the public messages from Vote and uh, from GM were all very polite. They were all very mm-hmm. nice. They were all, uh, Vote uh, sent a note to the employees saying like, you guys are great. Hang in there. Keep fighting. You're going to do this. Uh, there was nothing, there was no sense of bitterness at all. Right. Uh, and 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 likewise, the GM uh, press release was very complimentary and said, he has done such a great job for us and brought us such a long way. We wish him nothing but the best in the future. Uh, this feels more like Vote probably wanted to go and there was mm-hmm. there were so many things that they could lay at his feet uh, with these recent missteps uh, that that for investors it was it was going to be a good look anyway. So yeah, uh, whether there are hard feelings, sometimes there are hard feelings behind the scenes, and these play out nicely in 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 the, in the press. In, yeah in the press um, that may be, but it doesn't it doesn't appear to be that. Uh, however, <laughs> that is not <laughs> true. <laughs> of what seems to have happened at OpenAI. There were some complimentary things said about Sam Altman and such, uh, and we'll get to those, uh, but but there's obviously a lot more going on behind the scenes in that one. Yeah. Uh, so we'll, let, let's uh, let's talk about that here in a second. First, though, if you have feedback about anything that gets brought up on the show, you know, if you have some inside information about what's happening at OpenAI, get in touch with the DTNS audience on the socials, at DTNS Show on X, formerly Twitter, uh, also DTNS Show on Mass. Mastodon at mstdn.social, Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, and DTNS Picks, DTNS PIX on Instagram and Threads. Previously on OpenAI, uh, <laughs> man, it was a wild a weekend. Uh, let, let's try to recap everyone. Uh, we heard about it right before the show on DTNS. So they mentioned Sam Altman getting fired at the very beginning of the show. Uh, here's everything that we know has happened. Uh, and these are the facts. OpenAI's board announced late Friday that it fired CEO Sam Altman over not being, quote, consistently candid in his communications. Uh, A source later told Wall Street Journal that no single incident led to the dismissal. Uh, The statement had said that Greg Brockman would stay on, but he didn't. He quit. Mira Marotti was named on Friday as interim CEO. She's the CTO of OpenAI. And Altman is well known for having multiple projects underway at once. WorldCoin. We've talked about WorldCoin, a prominent example. Uh, it's, it's, it's his cryptocurrency identity verification project. It's not the only one. So coming up with a project that you could argue had conflict of interest wouldn't have been hard. Reports began to come out that board member and co-founder Ilya Sutskever and board member and Cora CEO Adam D'Angelo were likely the driving forces behind Altman's ouster. But all four other board members, besides Brockman and Altman, voted uh, to get rid of him. It was suspected that it might have been over disagreements regarding safety and profit, but later the safety concern was denied, leading profit. We'll get to that. Altman went to OpenAI Sunday, like when he went to the building uh, with a guest pass that he posted on on X uh, to negotiate his return. But it broke down uh, over his demand to have the entire board replaced. Apparently, it was it was more about whether there would be an apology and things like that. But but for whatever reason, uh, it broke down. OpenAI then named former Twitch CEO Emmett Shear. The guy who co-founded Twitch along with a few other people, including Dan Vogt, formerly of Cruise, uh, Emmett Shear is now the new CEO of OpenAI. Shear said he would hire an independent investigator to look into the firing of Altman. Then Microsoft's Satya Nadella announced Microsoft had hired Altman, Brockman, and several other OpenAI leaders for a new AI research team, though some sources are saying that's in a holding pattern because we're still waiting to find out what's actually going to happen at OpenAI. Because on Monday, Ilya Sutskever, one of those board members who voted to get rid of Sam, and who had previously been saying, yeah, it's a sad day, but we had to do it, wrote, I deeply regret my participation in the board's actions. I never intended to harm OpenAI. I love everything we've built together, and I will do everything I can to reunite the company. Well, now we got one more board vote, uh, and we've got a tie. Uh, Altman replied to that post with three heart emojis. So apparently those two are mending their fences. And then coincidentally, on Monday... Adam D'Angelo, one of the other board members of OpenAI, announced that his company, Cora's AI effort, Poe, 
uh, was launching user created bots supporting Claude and Chat GPT as a base. Remember, user created bots were something that was a big hit at, at OpenAI's developer days. Then, and I'm, I'm, we're going to get to discussing this, I promise. <laughs> uh, there's just a lot to work through here. The Wall Street Journal reported that more than 500 of OpenAI's 770 or so employees said they would leave the company to go work at a new Microsoft division under Sam Altman unless Altman was brought back to OpenAI. And they said in the letter that Microsoft assured them they'd all get positions. Uh, the employees signed the letter. And among the employees who signed the letter were board member Ilya Sutskever and CTO and former temporary CEO Mira Murati. Uh, Altman has most recently posted, we are all going to work together some way or other, which The Verge says means the fight is continuing. Altman may be trying to flip two more of those board members to vote his way and overturn the decision to dismiss him and remove the existing board. So those board members would be the aforementioned Adam D'Angelo of Cora, as well as Tasha McCauley, who works at RAND as a senior management scientist, and Helen Toner, who's a director at a Washington nonprofit. So board member intrigue for sure, and loads of unexpected, sudden behavior, flipping of alliances. It's Game of Thrones inside of OpenAI. Uh, Nika, what did you make of this from when you heard it and watching it play out over the weekend? The limited series on Netflix is going to be amazing. <laughs> That's what my wife was, said originally. She's like, I saw someone who said Aaron Sorkin better get to work on the script right away. I mean, Succession, AI, Open AI Edition. Mm -hmm. yep, um, yep. Because it was just really, you could watch the the fallout in real time. And it was just like, one minute is one thing. Then I, I mean, it just, it was pretty amazing to watch. Um, I'm sure all the non-tech folks are like, what? What are they talking about? I don't know. I'm confused. But just to see, anytime you get over 60%, almost 65% of your employees to threaten to quit unless the leader is reinstated, I mean, to me, that was the biggest kind of like wow moment to get that many people to agree that this is our this is our guy. And this is the person that we want to work for. And if you don't bring him back, we're going to leave. So it's one of those things where I think Microsoft had to act quickly, open AI, open AI the, lead, the remaining leadership and the new leadership, they had to, you know, get this done, like we said, over a weekend, because when the markets opened, they didn't want, they didn't want this to tank because there are a lot of investors who get really spooked when it comes to this type of thing, because it's like the company is in turmoil. Like, what are we going to do? What is our mm -hmm. return? What is our investment looking mm -hmm. like? And they had, to, I think they had to move really quickly to try and stop some of the bleed and stop some of the panic. And to me, um, Nadella, he's the winner. Either way this goes, he's making out like a bandit. Um, whether he gets all these new folks to come over to Microsoft to work for um, Altman or whether, you know, they get Altman back at open AI. He's, he's pretty much in the sweet spot. So he's kind of winning on, on either side of this. Yeah. It's, it's important to understand. And we have, we have an episode of know a little more on open AI uh, that explains how the company is, is organized uh, that, uh, <laughs> that episode obviously needs an update uh, after this weekend, <laughs> but there are two main components to open AI. There's a nonprofit organization that the board runs. And that's the board we're talking about. When we talk about Sutskever uh, and when we talk about D'Angelo and all of them, they are on the board of open AI, the nonprofit company. That company fully owns uh, or majority owns a for-profit company called OpenAI Global LLC. Uh, and what's interesting about this entire situation is that OpenAI's board is not under the control of shareholders of OpenAI Global LLC. Those board members are beholden to public interest. The charter of OpenAI is a be public benefit nonprofit. It's a 5013C company, uh, and it's charged with developing AI consistent with a benefit for humanity. Whereas the for-profit company, can make a profit. However, it's profit capped. 
So Microsoft has invested in the for-profit company, but it, there's a limit to how much money it can make back. Now, granted, it's a, it's a big limit. They can make a lot yeah. of money back, but there is a cap on how much they can make back. That's important to understand as to why the board members can get away with voting against the interest of a major investor like Microsoft, because they're not beholden to Microsoft. Uh, it also explains why there could be a rift between, and this is one of the theories that was put out by a lot of people over the weekend, between people who believe that OpenAI has been moving too fast either to pursue profits or to pursue artificial generalized intelligence in an unsafe manner. Uh, Sutskever has been much more cautious about how fast they should develop open AI than Altman has. And so some people thought, well, maybe that's the split. And maybe it was because Sutskever did vote to get rid of him. But apparently Sutskever had a change of mind and was like, well, my, my gap isn't that big uh, and has swung back Altman's way. So I think then you look at the other board members to see, well, who else might benefit from Altman being gone? It's hard to see too much uh, from the member who is at RAND. Uh, it's hard to see too much from the member that is at uh, the Washington nonprofit, which leaves Adam D'Angelo, who has a competing product in Poe at Cora. And the reason he can be on the board is because it's a nonprofit. And so yeah. he, you know, he doesn't have a vested interest in the shares of OpenAI Global LLC. Anyway. Your guess is and good in mind, whether it was D'Angelo or anybody else. But yeah. if you want to understand the dynamics behind it, that that's important to know. And it also seems to me that um, I was seeing somewhere that the for-profit board is on Altman's side. It's the nonprofit. Well, it's not even the full board at this point now. It's only a few members of the board. Three to three. Yeah. 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 On the, on who, the nonprofit. who are. Yeah. yeah. So it's one of those things where I think that original intent of the way they set this up, the for-profit side and the non-profit side. I think it was admirable because we've all been hearing about uh, ethical AI. How was this data being you know, used? How is it being stored? We want to make sure it doesn't get too out of hand and be detrimental. So the, the intent behind the way they set it up is, like I said, is admirable and understandable, but I don't think they put in all the necessary precautions to govern it, right? Because you've given all the control to the nonprofit side. And so everybody else is just kind of, you know, working the room to try and mm -hmm. make sure that the nonprofit board members are, are happy or, you know, or at least um, content as to not really mess up the flow of the for-profit side, which is, you know, where the money comes from. Yeah. And, and I think that's an important point. I think that's a really important point is that uh, Microsoft has a very solid license to open AI's technology. And Microsoft has played this perfectly, as you mentioned earlier, <laughs> Nika, uh, in saying, hey, we're still happy to support open AI. They've said that all along the way. But that profit motive, because it's capped and because the board is not related to the profit motive, it encourages people to find another way to benefit from this technology. And one of those other ways could be, and I'm not saying this is what happened, uh, to force this kind of situation to happen so that you then get all of the talent, uh, Sam Altman and everybody else, those 500 other employees under Microsoft, you still have the license to open AI technology and Microsoft can now make as much money as they want off of the talent because it's not part of the capped profit company uh, and they don't lose anything. In fact, like you said, they have nothing to do but gain. I don't think that's Microsoft's end game because it does look like Microsoft is continuing to press to get Altman back at OpenAI because I think that's what Altman wants and they don't mm -hmm. want to ruin their relationship with him, but they very clearly are using their licensing position and their 49% ownership as leverage to say, yeah. look, if you want to keep Altman out, then we're going to basically take everything from OpenAI Global LLC and develop it in-house, which down the road could turn OpenAI into just a, a licensing company and nothing else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a shell of, of what they once were, because 
we all know, you know, Altman has been the face of open AI and the, the brains behind the, the operation, so to speak, along, of course, with the other talent. But he is the most notable face that goes along with open AI. And if, like I said, you know, Microsoft wins either way, but if they can get those 500 people, the 65% of yeah. open AI over under their umbrella, give Sam his team back, give him, you know, free reign to, you know, run this research group and make a boatload of money without any type of hindrance. I mean, honestly, that might be the the best, you know, thing for, for Microsoft, but they're, you know, making sure they play this very dip diplomatically depending on, you know, which side of the coin this comes off of. And what I do, I do kind of feel bad for, um, what's his name, Eugene... What's his last name? The the interim CEO, he's coming into this, you know, when the fire hose is still going. It's still a five alarm fire. And he's trying to, you know, settle the, the employees that are there, trying to hold on to them and not, you know, see them all sprint towards Microsoft because you're cutting your workforce down to, you know, 30 some odd percent of what you have left. And the people that are leaving are likely your most senior, your most involved talent. So he really has, um, you know, quite the task before him <laughs> no in addition <laughs> to all of the PR stuff. And then what if they bring Sam back? Where does this leave this guy? Cause right. he left Twitch, um, you know, just what, nine or so months ago. I mean, left in March. Like, yeah. His yeah, name is Emmett, it, Emmett Shear. Emmett, Shear. Yeah, he, he left Twitch in March. Yeah. Emmett Shear, not Eugene. Sorry about that. Yeah, but yeah, um, cool. yeah. And it's, they brought this guy. He's been, I, I, I read his statement on Twitter. Um, you know, he, he had a child, the, this, his baby's like nine months and he's basically come out of his, you know, I'm going to relax and be with my family time to come back into this type of, you know, stressful, unknown, ever evolving situation. And if open AI agrees to Altman's demands and brings him back as CEO, where does it leave him? Where does it leave the staff? I mean, it's yeah. What's his motivation lot. for taking this very right. uncertain position so quickly? Right. Um, and 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 is there any connection to vote leading leaving Cruz uh, the day before? Uh, Sheer goes back to the Y Combinator group, which also is where Sam Altman came from. Uh, so it's not impossible. I mean, they certainly know each other, but it's not right. impossible that there's some other connection uh, going back there. Uh, yeah, it is a uh, it is a story of Silicon Valley intrigue uh, that not even all the players in Silicon Valley know exactly uh, what's going on at this point. Um, but uh, like I said, by the time you listen to this, there probably will be more shoes have dropped and uh, we will we will continue to to try to keep up on that and update the story again on the next show once we get the details. All right. Before we go, let's check out the mailbag. Matt writes, hello, DTNS. I've probably owned around 10 cars since I started driving at 16, and all of them have been manuals, meaning manual transmissions. He's writing in response to our story on Friday with Tim Stevens about the electric vehicle that acts like it has a manual, even though electric vehicles don't need manual transmissions. Uh, Matt says, all of them were slow, boring, and definitely not enthusiast cars, unless you're the Hello Road YouTube channel, think 1988 Chevy Nova. The manual transmission added a bit of fun to my otherwise boring cars. The manual also meant nearly all my friends couldn't borrow my car. And now that I live in an area with high car thefts, my manual car is less likely to get stolen. I'm hoping my next car is fully electric, but I'm really going to miss my manual transmissions. Great show. Give Otis the dog a boop for me. Uh, best, Matt. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> you ever drive manual transmission? I kind of miss it. I, my dad tried to teach me and it just wasn't clicking. Yeah. It, it It's a lot of effort. And um, I was like, I told him, I was like, you know what? I think I'm okay on this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate I your effort. 
But um, I think I'm just going to stick with the automatic. Thank you. I bought a 1992 Saturn that was a manual transmission and just kind of like, well, I guess I need to learn because I bought this car and (laughs) and figured it out. Uh, Nika, thank you so much uh, for hanging out today. If folks want to find out what else you got going on, where should they go? You can find me at Tech Savvy Diva on pretty much all of your social media outlets. You can also check me out um, on Snobble Westcast, which is my podcast that I host with another contributor to DTNS, Terrence Gaines. You can go over to snobblewestcast.com to find out all the information about our show. Indeed. Uh, patrons, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet. Maybe we'll talk a little more uh, about those German uh, rumors, but likely we're just going to keep refreshing the feeds and <laughs> and sharing our theories about what's happening at OpenAI in, in a little more open-ended fashion. So uh, thank you, patrons, and stick around for that. You can also catch the show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And come back tomorrow for more updates on the OpenAI saga, as well as our home theater holiday buyer's guide with robert herrick talk to you then this show is part of the frog pants network get more at frogpants.com diamond club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>